So in this example, we were given the onset of a function. We wrote the onset in our Carnot map, and then we found all the prime implicants, which we gave as A, B, C, D, E, and F. Then we found the fact that E and F are essential. And then in order to cover the last three ones that we had here, we could use either a with C or we could use B with C or we could use B with D. This we basically did by just looking at the Carnot map. But what we're going to do now is that we're going to find or describe a more structured way of finding the minimized function, which will always give us one function that is of minimum form, but it will not give us all the functions of minimum form. The prime table, or sometimes called p table here, shows which of the min terms our prime implicants will cover. So our rows in our prime table will correspond to the different prime implicants, and the column will correspond to our min terms. And then we put a cross in the table to show when a min term is covered by the implicant. Then we can use the following three definitions and properties in order to find our minimum cover. So we say that an essential row will contain an x that is not represented in any other rows. So essential rows must be in our cover. Then we say that the row R dominates row S if S is a proper subset of R. So if all x that are in S also exists in R. And then we can use the fact that the dominated row S can be deleted from our table. And then for our columns, we say that column C dominates column D if D is a proper subset of C. So if all our X's in D also exist in C. And the property that we can use here is that the dominating column C can be deleted from our prime table. So let us do this for the example that we had. So the first thing we still want to do is that we want to write our Carnot map and we want to put our ones in the correct places in our Carnot map. Then we need to find all the prime implicants by making as large rectangular blocks as possible in our Carnot map. So this part we cannot get any help with, but when we have now identified our prime implicants, which are our largest rectangular boxes, then we can use our prime table in order to know which of the prime implicants are we going to use in our minimal function. So we make our prime table where for each of the rows in the table we write our prime implicants. And for each of the columns that we have, so 0, 4, 5, and so on, we write all the different min terms that we have in our function. So these are all the input combinations where we have a 1 in our function. So let us start with the prime implicant that we denoted A. So A covers the min term that we have denoted 0 and the min term that we have denoted 8. The prime implicant B will cover 0 and 4. The prime implicant C will cover 4 and 5. And the prime implicant D will cover 5 and 13. The implicant E will cover 9, 11, 13 and 15. And F will cover 8, 9, 10 and 11. And now we want to identify our essential rows. So an essential row is where we have an x that is not represented in any other row. So we can see that this is an essential row f because the x here is not seen in any other of the rows. And similarly for the e prime implicant we have an x here which covers the implicant 15 and this is not covered by any anything else. So it is an x that is not represented in any other row. 
So since these two rows are essential, we are going to use the prime implicants E and F in our function, which means that we will cover 8, 9, 10, 11, 13 and 15 using these two prime implicants. So these can just be excluded from our prime table when we continue and proceed with the next step in our prime table. So let us just write a cleaner version of our prime table like this and we just enter the x's that we had since before. So what we can do now is that we can look at dominating rows. So we can see here for example that the row B here dominates the row A because all the x's in A also consists in row B. And similarly we can see that row C will dominate row D because all the x's in D also are contained in uh, row C. So what we can do here now is that we can just exclude these two rows from our prime table. And then we have a new prime table that looks like this. So we have B that covers the min terms 0 and 4 and C that covers the min terms 4 and 5. And now we can see that these two rows are both essential in our new prime table. So both of these rows are going to be needed. And when we're using these two prime implicants, we will also cover the rest of the min terms. So we cover 0 because B is the only one that covers 0. We cover 5 because C is the only one that covers 5. And both of these, whichever one we use, will also cover 4. So our minimized function here, f min, is given by E or F since this is what we had from the first version of our prime table and we also see that we need to include b or c in our expression because we need to cover the rest of the implicants. So if we follow this procedure we can always find a minimum version of our boolean function but it, also, it only gives us one minimal version of the function because we can see already from this table here that if you want to cover 0, 4 and 5 we can do that using for example A and C and we can do it using B and D and we can also do it using B and C. But it is usually enough that we have one minimal function so we can use this which results from our prime table.